what can we do with these AI plus human systems? Well, for one thing, we can predict financial behaviors. So if any of you, whether you extend loans or credit to consumers or extend loans or credit to small businesses, um, you're relying on models that talk about whether or not someone's going to pay back that loan. Even trade credit is built on the assumption that someone will pay you back. And you're plugging numbers from a company like Equifax or Dun & Bradstreet into your model. Those models are not super awesome. We can make them maybe 30 to 50% better using this computational social science that I've described. So uh, uh, the company that I formed around this particular idea is called Distilled Analytics. We can also improve productivity in the workplace. So what I'm showing here, this illustration, is uh, a product release cycle for a multifunction business unit within a large Northern European financial services organization. All right, so it's a, it's a bank, right? And they've got, you know, they've, for this particular product group, they've got a development team, they've got a sales team, they've got a support team. Of course, they have management. The uh, blue lines are emails, and the red lines are uh, uh, meetings, face-to-face -face meetings. And so combining looking at email and looking at face-to-face -face meetings, we can get a window into what's actually going on in the company that we didn't have before. Uh, it turns out, I'll give you one of the punchlines from this study, uh, email is completely useless for changing behavior. In fact, happy productive teams, in a follow-up study we found, happy productive teams uh, send 17% fewer emails in, in addition to boosting their productivity by 17%. That's just a coincidence, but uh, uh, email volume goes down when you're meeting and talking to each other and being more productive. So in this particular case, looking at the patterns of meetings revealed to us that no one talked to the client service team until after the product was released and it bombed. And then they'd have big meetings all day with the client service team, and then they'd stop talking to them again while they made the next product. And so by revealing what was going on in the organization, we found that just by changing the seating chart and moving client service to be next to everybody else instead of on a different floor, they had a dramatic improvement in performance. We can use AI plus people together to predict the future. Now, about 10 years ago, people got excited by this idea of prediction markets, that with network technologies plugging people into each other and, and talking to each other more, we'd be able to predict future events. Um, and it was kind of half right. So basically, you could, for a parlor trick, for, for a party trick, you could predict something. But there was a really sort of wide range of error. It's like plus or minus 5%, which is fine for a party trick, but not fine if you're trying to run a business. So the wisdom of crowd gives you that sort of uh, a wider range of error. On the other hand, you could use experts to try and predict the future, people who tend to predict better than others. But they tend to get it more wrong when they get it wrong. Um, so Nate Silver has written a wonderful book called The Signal and the Noise, uh, where he talks about that experts who appear on television are even more wrong than the regular expert. So, so we can't listen to experts and we can't listen to the wisdom of the crowd. How do we predict the future? Because we all would like to know what's going to happen next week, next month, next quarter. So if you use a machine learning system, if you use a kind of AI to understand what's going on in these predictions. And you start exposing the predictions to each other. You make them social. So I can see your prediction, and you can see his prediction, and he can see her prediction. And, and you start to mix that up. And then you tune it. You use the AI to help decide whose predictions will we elevate a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean between 20 and 40%. We get a dramatic improvement in the prediction power. So this was from an experiment we ran last year. So as Allison mentioned, we teach the, the Oxford FinTech class online. You get people in 130 countries. So very diverse set of backgrounds predicting future events. And it turns out you can predict the closing price of the S&P 500 within 0.1% as opposed to within 5% by this tuning of predictions using an AI together with a person. Right? So, Let's apply that back to the organization, because we're talking about AI and the future-proof workforce. So what if we took all that knowledge that's inside your companies, and we tuned it up with an AI, 
And we used it to do things like predict what we should charge for a new product. Predict whether or not the product is going to ship on time. Decide what countries we should expand into. What if we could improve the quality of those predictions by threefold? That's the promise and potential that AI plus people together holds. So we believe that these AI human systems could make a company more responsive to the CEO. We're going to we're going to make our culture change to be more forward looking and take advantage of new technologies. Well, you can say that, but it takes a long time for that to bleed down the org chart. But with these systems, you can get there faster. So the big idea is that AI-enabled social physics can reveal what's going on in your organization. And it can shift culture, because we can do these interventions. Right? Combining those ideas, AI and people together, can make companies more successful. So think about that for a second. AI-enabled social physics can help you lead your organizations better.